In this lesson, we'll be covering two generic collections, lists and dictionaries. We will also be using some of their methods. Both work in similar ways to arrays, but with some important differences. Let's take a look at the list class first. A list is like a dynamically sized array. This means that you don't need to know how many elements it's going to have ahead of time. Before we go too far, let's quickly create a class that we can store in our list. Since a list is generic, it can store any type, but for our example, we're going to create a class called bad guy. This way, we can have a list of bad guys. This class will have no inheritance, two public fields named name and power, and a constructor to allocate these values. Now we can start making our list. The first thing to do when making a list is to include the system.collections.generic namespace. We will do this at the top of the script. Next we declare the list. List is a generic class, so after any modifiers, we put the class name followed by a type that we want to store in the list. In our case, bad guy. Then we give the list a name, and since list is a class, we call the constructor. Currently our list is empty, so let's allocate to it. We do this using the add function. This will add a new element to the end of the list. The parameter for the add function is the object that is being added to the list. In our case, we'll call a constructor for the bad guy class. Now, let's populate the list. Items in a list can be accessed in the same way as an array, using an index. It also has a count property, which works the same as the length property of arrays. Lists have functions like remove at and insert for manual arrangement. Remove at removes an element from the list at a given index and moves all elements above it down a place. Insert takes an index and an element, pushing each element after that index up a place. One of the most powerful functions of a list is sort. This can be used to order a list of a given type by any variable of that type. It relies on the type implementing the iComparable interface. Let's go back to our bad guy class and implement it. First, iComparable is in the system namespace, so we need to declare that we are using it. Next, we need to say that this class is implementing the interface. This looks like inheritance. We're going to use the generic iComparable, and its generic type needs to be this class. Lastly, in order to complete the contract of the iComparable interface, we need to declare a public function called compareTo, which returns an integer and takes our generic type, bad guy, as a parameter. The idea behind the compareTo method is that if the object that it is being called from is greater than the object taken as a parameter, then the function returns a positive. If the object the method is called from is less than the object taken as a parameter, then the function returns a negative, and if they are equal, then it returns a zero. What defines one object being greater than another is decided by the programmer. For our function, we first want to check that the bad guy passed to the function exists. If it doesn't, then this bad guy is greater and the function should return a positive. Otherwise, the function returns the difference between the powers of the two bad guys. Thus, it will return a positive if the bad guy the method is being called from is greater. Note that we could have based this result on anything. The interface only requires that we implement the method. Now in order to sort the list using this comparison, we call badguys.sort. We'll log the bad guys list to the console to show that they have been sorted. In order to start fresh with the list and remove all of the elements, use the clear function. These are by no means all of the functions of the list class. To cover everything falls out of the scope of this tutorial. For further information, please see the related information links below. Dictionaries work similarly to lists, but instead have two types. This means that each element makes up a key value pair, sometimes called a KVP for short. Dictionaries also differ from lists in their intended use. A list is generally used in place of an array where more flexibility or functionality is required. A dictionary is used as a collection of values that can be accessed by one or more keys. The process for declaring a dictionary is very similar to that for a list. First, include the system.collections.generic namespace. Then declare a variable as before, but with two generic types. The first type is the key. This is the type that is referenced in order to access the second type, which is the value. In our example, we have a key type of string and a value type of bad guy. We're using this dictionary to store different search words that can be used to identify specific bad guys. In our start method, we declare two bad guys. Then we add them to the dictionary, just as we would with a list. Only this time, we are adding data for both the key and the value. Accessing the value that relates to a key is done very similar to accessing an element of an array or list. However, instead of using an index, which would have no inherent meaning to a dictionary, 
we insert a key into the square brackets. In the case of this example, we insert a string and we have the corresponding bad guy returned. If a key is provided but no such key exists in the dictionary, however, this will throw an exception. Therefore, if it is not guaranteed that the key exists, it is best to use the tryGetValue method. This method has a parameter of the key's type and an out parameter of the value's type. It returns true if the key passed as the first parameter exists. While this is a safer method for returning a value from a dictionary, it is slightly slower than directly referencing the specific key. For efficiency, use the key within squared brackets, but only when the specified key is definitely in the dictionary.